Hi everyone, welcome to Life Tips by Ning. In today's video, I'm going to share how to find your favorable element if your daily master is a young wood looking like this called Jia, born in the fall season. As I mentioned in prior videos, there are um, similarities and differences for young wood born in different seasons. Because the dominant element for fall is metal, so we need to layer on the traits of a metal into this um, young wood person. A metal has more restriction, calm, um, conservative characteristics to it. So relatively speaking, a young wood person born in fall, they're more um, introverted compared to the summer young wood, they're more extroverted, right? So fall people, they're more conservative, a modest, introvert, super responsible. And compared to the spring born young wood who are relatively stubborn, the fall born young wood, they're more likely to listen to people's advice and suggestions. And looking back to your chart, if your position number six looks like this, Shen, that's about August for our solar calendar. And Shen consists of two solar terms. One is the beginning of fall, and the other is the end of heat. So that paints the environmental climate this tree lives in. So going back to this 12 stages of exist existence, that trend chart of growing up um, to the adulthood, the prime state, and going back down before we circle back again. Remember that chart? Um, for, so for a life pattern of a tree, during the springtime, it's more growing up um, in a relatively wet and environment. So the number one favorable element for spring young wood is fire to warm up the environment, have sunshine so it can grow healthy. And for the summertime, that's you're growing from adulthood to that highest point in your trend line to that prime state. So you already have this warm environment. The number one craving element is water to nourish your rooting system. So you can produce flower or fruit on your tree branches. Now we're in this fall season. So it's starting to um, kind of going down in that downward momentum. Imagine you have this tree or fruit picked away from the branches already. So your number one job for fall is to trim, trim down those overgrown branches so you can concentrate your energy in your rooting system rather than wasting all of your nutrition on those overgrown branches. And you can preserve it enough energy to go through fall and winter so that next spring you can bloom and blossom again. So that's kind of the number one goal for fall young wood is to trim away all of those overgrown branches. That's why the favorable element will be a paired yin fire and young wood. It's very easy to understand young, uh, sorry, young metal because metal trims um, wood, right? So you have a big young metal to effectively cut down and trim away the overgrown unnecessary branches. And young metal is way more effective than yin metal because yin metal is too small, too delicate. It's not strong or for forceful enough to cut it down. And young metal also needs yin fire to support it because the blade gets really dull. So because fire suppresses metal, you need this yin fire to gently melt away the dulling blade so it can be sharpened again to trim down the um, branches effectively. The reason yin fire works better than yang fire is because yang fire is too strong. Um, it might not do its work of refining and sharpening the edges. It can actually overdo its work and um, melt the metal so the metal become use useless. That's why those two um, elements are the preferred ones. So if it appears on like, especially position number one, two, four in your chart, that would be a really ideal bazi. But most people, that's how it works. Um, but again, it's based on the foundational logic that your tree needs trimming 
What if you run into a situation that your daily master is fairly weak? Weak meaning that on the top row, heavenly stems, position number one to four, you don't have any other wood or water supporting yourself. And that happens again on the um, in the bottom row, the earthly branches. So you have no root, other wood in five, seven, eight, or any water to support and grow the wood. In that case, this pair would not be that person's favorable element because you're already fairly weak. You don't want a more sharpened blade to trim yourself. Uh, you actually need more water and wood to support and grow myself to be in that healthy, balanced state. So in order to use this ideal state of yang metal with yin fire sharpening it, it's on the condition that your own wood daily master have some good rooting system in position number five, seven, eight, or have other wood and water on top to help yourself. So your overgrown tree, you need that trimming, you create that trimming, and then it's working um, kind of collaboratively with all the elements. So for a birth month of Yo, if your position number six looks like this, it's about uh, September. And that has the white dew and fall equinox to solar terms. It's getting a little colder compared to August. It's the same logic of if you have a fairly balanced or maybe even a little too strong of a young wood in your bazi chart, then you definitely need Yin fire and yang metal working together to trim yourself. And the reason it also likes yang fire is that um, it's getting too cold. So that yang fire is like a sunshine trying to warm the environment into a more pleasant fall time versus way too cold. Um, but because I said yang fire has the danger of melting this yang metal earlier. So the positioning of those two matters. So if your inner bazi chart, you happen to have both showing up, let's say the yang metal is sitting in position number one, and then ideally this yang fire has, is sitting in position number four or somewhere over here. So it has like pillars in between to prevent them from interfering with each other because at the end of the day, uh, fire does suppress metal. You don't want to weaken this metal that you want and favorable, right? But in another situation, if your young metal is here and your young fire is here, it's like right next to each other, that's not as ideal because they, the young fire is actually weakening this preferred young metal in your chart. And last but not least, if your birth month's position number six looks like this, it's called Xu in Chinese. That's the equi equivalent of October. It's a cold dew and the frost descent. Those are the two solar terms. So you can see it's getting colder, right? Just from that solar terms description. That's a transitional month from fall to winter season. And as I mentioned pre previously, there's like a dry earth type and a wet earth type. She happens to be the dry earth. So imagine you have a um, almost wintry environment with a tree and this poor root is sitting in this very cold and dry earth with not much moisture in it. You, you run into the danger of the root is dying. Then you, you don't even have a chance of waiting until next spring to reblossom again. That's why in addition to fire and metal, for this particular October birth month, you also need water. Not enough, like one or two is perfect. You don't want too much water, but you want some water to keep the rooting system moist so it's not dying. That's why this transitional earth month, um, the demand, the requirement is a little higher. You, you really want all five elements in it in a balanced state, so fire, water, and metal in your chart. So that's the logic of analyzing favorable elements. But before I let you go, I also want to call out this concept of illness versus medicine. What I mean by that is 
in reality, it's fairly rare to find a person's bazi chart that has exactly enough routing. It's already in a balanced state. Then you have a fire and metal trimming myself. What's the chance your bazi chart looks like this? Uh, most of the people, 99%, we have some imbalanced um, element in our original chart. So for example, if you're, you're, you're fairly balanced, you have fire, but too much metal. When I say too much, it's over three, three and above. Or on the bottom, like five, seven, eight, you have this three combination working together. So the chi of metal is like too strong out of balance. Then we call that too much of a metal is a disease or Ill illness in your own chart. And what's the medicine to cope with it? In that example, you might want to use water because um, metal grows water and water grows uh, wood, right? So this imbalance of too much metal uh, cutting and over trimming this tree, once you introduce this medicine of water in there, it kind of reduces that metal's chi to grow water and older uh, water in turn grows wood. So it, it moves this too much metal and too little wood over trimmed wood into a more balanced state by introducing that middleman water in between. So that's how you analyze what's the illness, what's the unbalanced uh, uh, chi in your chart, and do you have enough medicine? If you do have that medicine in your original chart, that's a more like easier and relatively less hurdle life experience but if you don't have those medicine in your original chart then we need to wait for that annual trend or the 10-year trend to watch out for those medicine so you can um, have a relatively relatively smoother life experience that's more propelling you to make your goal achieving your goals easier so that's the beauty of learning bazi um, next episode i'll share some case studies to further illustrate the logic behind this favorable element identification process. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.